I finished scoring all of the music to the Vince the Voodoo Doll video here in my Pro Tools session and now what I would like to do is export some of those MIDI parts over to Sibelius, my notation software, so that I can convert those MIDI tracks into readable charts for musicians to perform. Ultimately replacing the MIDI performances with live human performances in my Pro Tools session. The first thing that I need to do is go to the window part of my menu and look at this MIDI data in the score editor window. I've actually pre-selected the tracks that I would like to convert to notation, the violin, the trumpet, the alto sax, and trombone parts. As you can see, the program defaults by displaying each MIDI track as a grand staff. So what we need to do is go in and reconfigure these staves for the appropriate instrument. The way to do that is to go under the tracks window here in this sidebar and uh, choose notation display track settings. Once we get there, we can see that the violin is showing up here under Grand Staff. Change that to Treble Clef. You can see that changes it in the score over here. Trumpet is also Treble Clef, as is the Alto Sax. We change the trombone to Bass Clef over here. And now we have something that kind of looks like how the score is going to end up looking after we export it to Sibelius, but Sibelius will give us the flexibility to make the parts more readable and presentable for the musicians. Now that the score editor window is configured the way we want it, it's time to export the MIDI data to Sibelius. So under the file menu we go to export, choose Sibelius, And there we go. And I'm going to save this document to the desktop for easy access. By the way, in a previous segment of this tutorial, remember how we talked about creating the downbeat of a new measure by going to the meter change window and deselecting the snap to bar box? Well, because that does actually truncate the previous measure, when that information comes up in the Sibelius document, it can make the, the document respond in a rather clunky fashion because there is a bit of rhythmic corruption. So what I've had to do is create a new duplicate document of the Sibelius document I've exported to and copy and paste that material over to the new document so the program responds reasonably. Here's our Sibelius document. Here's one of the spots where a measure was truncated, this one here in order for the beginning of this measure to begin right on the frame where Vince starts walking. You can bet that musicians don't want to look at something like this, so what we're going to do uh, is get rid of these weird figures here that don't really apply to the reading musician. Here's my duplicate document. And you can see that I have entered all the time changes and the measures and the instruments in the same order as the exported Pro Tools document. At this point I'm going to copy the music from the original exported document all the way up to the first truncated measure and you can see that it's it's nutty over here. So I'm copying up to that point and then changing these notes here to whole notes. Change these to whole notes by going over to the keypad, and you can also do it just by entering on the keypad of your computer. These are whole notes now. As well as time changes, there are some tempo changes, and at the beginning, it's a little bit slower than after Vince begins walking. So, I'm going to go into the Create window under Text, Tempo. Now, while holding down the Control key and clicking and holding, I can go to this menu here and I'm going to say quarter note equals 112. That's the tempo of that section. I'm going to cut and paste the next four measures now, right uh, up until the 716 measure.
Okay, now I'm going to clean up this measure here. There really actually shouldn't be any note values in this thing. The next step is beginning to massage some of this note data here because what I did in the Voodoo Vince Pro Tool session was I entered the MIDI data as swing and what the notation software has done is it, it's interpreted it as the precise note values that were in the session and what I want to do is create a little sign which they call metric modulation where eighth notes are to be interpreted as swung and that starts at this measure right here and we'll go to create text other system text metric modulation and by holding the control key we go right here this little icon eighth notes equals quarter note and eighth note under a triplet sign now the notes can be converted to eighth notes which will make it easier for musicians to read we'll start here we'll take these notes and copy them and actually paste them where they belong which is this part of the beat right here. These will get turned into eighth notes. As will these. Gonna select these notes here. Paste them where they belong, which is right here. And also change those into eighth notes. And I did that by hitting the keypad here where the eighth note icon is. Next, we take these 16th notes, which people really want to see as an 8th note after this. We've copied that. We're selecting this. We're making those 8th notes instead of dotted 8th notes. And pasting those other notes here. Making those 8th notes and then tying them to the next note. I did find this process to be a little bit involved, but I've certainly been through it before. Uh, another way to approach it is to actually duplicate the MIDI tracks in Pro Tools and straighten out all the timing so that they appear as eighth notes when you export them. So uh, that might have been an easier workaround had I thought about it before I got into this. Because this trombone part is written with an awful lot of ledger lines, but I know my guy can play it that high. I'm going to go in here, go under Create, Clef, and change the clef to treble. Oh, that looks a lot better. Trombone players do read in both bass and treble clef most of the time. Since the tempo changes here to a faster tempo, I'm going to go ahead and and do that now. Move that. Go to create. Tempo. Hold down the control key, and here we go. Quarter note equals 150 beats per minute. Press the escape key and we're out of there. Notice how Sibelius will actually move stuff around to avoid collisions with other things on the score. And that's a really, really nice feature of Sibelius. What you see here now is my completed Vince the Voodoo Doll score for violin, trumpet, alto saxophone, trombone, and drum kit. You can see it looks really nice now. That did take a while, but actually, uh, even though it does look a little bit laborious, it only took about an hour or two to deal with this. And the musicians really appreciate getting a part that is, that is actually readable. After the score is completed, you can go from the full score to the individual parts and see what they look like. That looks fine. Let's go to the drum part. You can see that for this drum part, I didn't write out each individual drum on the drum kit all the way through. 
I just used slash marks to indicate time and accents. And then when there were specific parts I wanted the drummer to do, I did actually write them out. This uh, F space here being the kick drum, the snare drum being here, uh, crash cymbal there. I indicated a ride cymbal for double time jazz. This is a roll for the snare drum and so forth. Notice that I also was very generous with text indications about what style I wanted the drummer to play in for the different sections of the piece. Next tutorial, we'll look at recording the live musicians, replacing these mini parts, and actually mixing the thing, exporting it to a QuickTime movie, and we'll have the final product to look at at that point.